There is a surge of respiratory illnesses in Texas after the holiday season. Dr. David Persh, chief medical officer for the city of Houston, is joining us this morning to talk about this uptick and how to protect yourself against the flu, COVID, RSV. Good morning. Excuse me for hacking. I'm not sick, but I've got this whole congestion thing going on. Does a lot do a lot of people right now? Yeah, and that's one of the things that I think that uh, people forget. <coughs> At this time of the year, we get a lot of different viruses that circulate. So we've been spending a lot of time talking about and paying a lot of attention to RSV, mm -hmm. the flu, and COVID. But there's a whole nother, you know, families, families, plural, of, of viruses. There's cold viruses, the uh -huh. rhinoviruses. It's called rhino because it's your nose predominantly. And then there are what we call parainfluenza viruses. And so these give symptoms similar to the flu, just nowhere near as severe. And they're floating around at the same time. So, uh -huh. you know, while we've got vaccines to prevent some of these, there's a whole nother uh, families, again, of viruses that can make you sick at this time of year. Yeah, I mean, I noticed a lot of family and friends like over the holidays who were sick and they're like, well, no fever, but I feel like crud, uh, you know, and just congested and they thought it was the flu, but then no fever ever materialized. How does the current actual flu season compare to last year if we're just looking at the flu? Yeah, so this year's flu season is starting to shape up like what we were seeing before the pandemic. So I guess in some regard, that may be a, a good piece of information. Last year, we had a pretty severe flu season, but it came really, really early. This year, we're following the more usual timing of the flu in that we tend to see it after the holidays here in Houston, most commonly January, February, late December, January, February. That's when we most commonly see it. Now, it's still early in January, so we're going to wait to see how severe it gets. Uh -huh. But already, the numbers are starting to go up pretty quick. So I think we're going to see a more typical and unfortunately pr you know, pretty strong flu season this year. So people need to protect themselves. Yeah, and still, if you haven't gotten the flu shot, you can still get the flu shot. And has that been working? Working very well for for people who had already gotten it. I mean, do you have variables or, or ways to know that? So the good news is this year's flu vaccine actually matches the circulating viruses pretty good. You know, some years it's, it's not such a great match, but this year it's a good match. And I think to your point is it's not too late. So when you get your flu shot over those next two weeks, when your body responds to the vaccine and builds up your immunity. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at another, you know, six, eight, maybe 10 weeks of flu season here in Houston. So if you get vaccinated now, you're probably going to, you know, get good protection uh, throughout the majority of the flu season. And the other thing I think people need to keep in mind is when you get your flu shot, you know, it, it very often will prevent you from getting the flu, but just as often it may not prevent you from getting it, but you'll become far less sick. Mm -hmm. And I think that's equally important, but that's been lost in this. In a lot of talk, people think it's a silver bullet. It's going to prevent yeah. me from getting it. That's not necessarily the case. But it can make you have, be sick for a lot shorter time period and your symptoms a lot less severe. Let's talk about COVID real quick. The, is, there's a new COVID variant. Am I saying it's JN1? Right. Yeah, so JN1 is the new one. It's it's out. It's still part of the Omicron family. Um, it's you know predominant not only across the United States, but we're starting to see quite a bit of it here in Houston. Uh, the good news on that is that it doesn't seem to be making people a whole lot more sick than uh -huh. the, the previous versions. It might be able to spread a little bit more quickly. But, you know, at this point, it's starting to get a little bit hard to understand. Is this variant taking over because it spreads more quickly, which had been the case early in the in the pandemic? Or is it because people's previous immunities are starting to drop off? And so JN1 uh -huh. is taking advantage of that. Uh, either way, the bottom line is that we're seeing some increases in hospitalizations. Uh, we went from around 60 in, in Harris County. We had around 60 so uh, people. I'm sorry, we had about uh, 20 people were admitted right after in the hospitals. We had about 20 people were admitted in Harris County hospitals right after um, Thanksgiving, and now it's up to about 270 or so oh. just since Thanksgiving. So we've seen a big increase in the hospitalizations, uh, and more importantly, or I said maybe more predictive, is that our wastewater has started to shoot up too. So that usually gives us about a two-week heads up as to what's coming. So yeah, COVID is taken off again. I think we can see it obviously for at least the next two weeks for those numbers to continue to increase. Oh, wow. And so all of the good habits that that we learned during COVID about, you know, washing hands and, um, you know, it, it, those same things can protect us from all of these other sort of viruses that you mentioned at the beginning of this. Can yeah. we talk about RSV and is there a way? I mean, we hear from our schools, you know, kids coming home from school saying, oh, this many kids in school were out today in your child's class. Is there anything that parents can do to protect kids from RSV? 
Yeah, so this gets a little bit confusing. Um, <coughs> the good news is that our, we had a spike, we had a peak of uh, RSV early this season. Now, the, the viral season isn't over. Could it repeat? Yes, it could. Hopefully it won't. But to your question about kids, so... Uh, you know, if you're a pregnant mom and you're near the end of your pregnancy, you need to talk to your doctor about uh, getting immunized because uh, that will then help protect your child. Okay. And then for those newborns up to just a couple of months old, there's actually um, antibodies that you can get. Again, you need to talk to your uh, provider and see. Now, the, the problem that we're seeing is actually a, a supply problem. The amount of, of uh, the antibodies for the children, the little ones, is in short supply. So. Um, you know, that, that, that's the issue. But there are things that you can do. You need to talk to your provider, find out if you qualify or if your child qualifies. And then the question is, you know, will you be able to get it? Um, even if you can't get it, again, you got to protect your kids, which you should be doing anyways, because mm -hmm. RSV, while severe and well, can be severe and it can be serious, there are still all these other viruses we're talking about that you want to protect your child from. So minimize your exposure to other people. Mom and dad, you got to be really a little obsessive compulsive about keeping yourselves protected. And then, um, you know, just all the things good parents do to protect their kids from illness. Yeah, I mean, lots of kids going back to school from winter break, and I know a lot of people were probably traveling on planes around a lot of other people and relatives, so we might see more of that over these next couple of weeks. Um, but also RSV infections, it's not just a, a, a kid thing. I mean, right? I mean, we normally think of it as, as infants and small kids, but it can also impact older adults. Yeah, you know, for most folks, you know, most <coughs> adults, if you become infected with RSV, it's just it's a nagging cough maybe some flu-like symptoms um, for most folks. But once you get to be older or if you've got immune problems, it can be really severe. And in fact, we see hospitalizations and in, in intensive care unit hospitalizations and sometimes some deaths among older folks and people with impaired immune systems just from RSV. Wow. So, you know, again, you know, none of these viruses, you know, should we ever be comfortable with? Any one of them can, you know, for the right person can be a huge problem. All right. Very good advice. Very um, important news this morning. Thank you, Dr. David Purse with the city of Houston. Thank you. Thanks for having me.